Hey, welcome back to the Encrypted Capital Recap for Tuesday, January 12th. Let's get right into it here. Right now, the cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at $946 billion. We can see here Bitcoin had a little bit of a pullback and is now uh, testing some prior levels here. Right now, Bitcoin is sitting at $34,872. Uh, we have Ethereum sitting at $1,117. XRP, uh, 29.8 cents. And Telcoin, one of my favorites, is up about 7% for today. Uh, we can see that Tron is down just a tad, Dash as well. And then District Network Token had a really nice bounce here. Let's take a look at this. So uh, sitting at about 21 cents here, dropped all the way down to roughly uh, 7.5 cents here. So 65% drop and it rebounded very nicely. And right now, as you can see, we are up 113% if anybody caught that bounce. It's funny, I was looking to catch that bounce yesterday and I completely missed it because the exchange that I was on, KuCoin, does not offer District Network token, uh, but you can find that on Coinbase. And let's get into our next article here. So uh, it says lost passwords lock millionaires out of their Bitcoin fortunes. So Bitcoin owners are getting rich because the cryptocurrency has soared. But what happens when you can't access that wealth because you forgot the password to your digital wallet? So it says here that Stefan Thomas, a German born programmer living in San Francisco, has two guesses left to figure out a password that is worth as of this week about two hundred and twenty million dollars. Uh, that's absolutely insane. I, I've heard so many horror stories of people making passwords too hard or losing their passwords because it was written on a piece of paper or one guy's wallet even fell into the water and you couldn't read any of that. And so now the seed that holds the keys to all of your fortunes is completely destroyed and now you have no way of getting access to it. So I highly, highly recommend you guys go out and find, I mean, they have them on Amazon, you can find them where you can go ahead and store your cryptocurrency seeds. Uh, we even sell those on our website. You can actually buy those uh, titanium plates that we sell where you can actually inscribe with a engraver onto these titanium plates. They're fireproof and waterproof. And as long as you store those things in a safe location, whether you bury it in your backyard or you store it in a safe where no one can see, uh, that is a great way to store your crypto. And you definitely don't want to get locked out of your money. That's like the worst thing that can happen to you. And I've heard that happen to so many people already. So please take those precautions. If you need help, storing your uh, crypto safely and securely we do sell ledgers we do sell those seed plates or you can reach us on our website we'd be happy to walk you guys through the process but we'll go ahead and get into the next article here so this is from markets insider and this says that bitcoin is back above thirty six thousand dollars but big investors are weary mark cuban says crypto is exactly like the dot-com bubble of the 1990s and here's the thing with that comment I, i'm not sure if we're in a crypto bubble just yet uh, obviously, we've seen Bitcoin rise drastically uh, since, you know, its inception, you know, going from pennies on the dollar to where it is now, you know, roughly thirty six thousand um, dollars. But if you look at the general trend, it just continues to keep making new highs. And there are certain price levels that will never be reached again. I mean, with the last bull run, we, we dropped from twenty thousand dollars roughly to thirty six hundred dollars. And, you know, we we're never seeing, you know, twenty five hundred dollars again, uh, in my opinion. But uh, I don't know if we're actually in a bubble just yet, only because you have so many cryptocurrencies that are coming out that have great use case and great technology behind it. I think we're going to be going out of the speculative phase of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And as we usher in this new era of crypto, and especially with all the regulations coming down the pipeline, you're going to have a real world use case for crypto. And I think that will just help propel um, crypto further. And I don't know if Bitcoin, you know, is going to be worth a million dollars one day or whatnot. But I do think cryptocurrencies that have great use cases can be worth a lot more. And so I think a lot of them will end up dying off. But generally speaking, you're going to have a handful of them that really um, shine, I guess, for lack of a better term. And so we can go ahead and see here that UK's finance ministry opens consultation on regulating crypto and stable coins. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So we know like Stellar Lumens, they're being utilized uh, in Germany and Ukraine, and they're basically bridging the gap so these countries can have their own cryptocurrencies. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Now, if you go and you look at just Bitcoin, Bitcoin's been sold as a store of value. 
but that was never really its intent. Its intent was to be used for anonymous payments uh, between two parties that were supposed to be somewhat fast and secure. And now what's happening is Bitcoin's being pitched as a store of wealth when it is an extremely volatile asset. It is very slow. The transaction times can take a very long time, especially when the network gets busy. You're talking about hours and I've even heard people waiting days for transactions to clear. And so you're going to need to have a fast, scalable solution that can go ahead and basically eliminate some of the problems that Bitcoin's having. So while Bitcoin is being pitched as a store of value, that was never its, in it, its intent. And I kind of look at it like how AOL was one of the first to market. Just because it was the first to market doesn't mean it's going to be the best and be around forever. And we can see that, you know. Google came out and, and blew Yahoo and AOL right out of the water. So it's not always necessarily the first movers that have the most potential. Oftentimes it's the projects that come after the main one that actually end up carrying the space and actually provide real value to the users. So UK's finance ministry opens consultation on regulating crypto and stable coins. It says the um, HM Treasury, the UK's finance ministry has opened a consultation on regulating crypto assets and stable coins. The Treasury wants to regulate the crypto space like traditional payment services, and the consultation is open until March 21st. So it says that the Treasury said the rise of crypto and stable coins could pose similar financial stability and consumer risks as traditional regulated payment systems, and hence regulating the space is necessary. So in other words, the government wants to ensure a level playing field and reduce opportunities for regulatory arbitrage. And we've been hearing that same phrase over and over again for the past year or two now is level playing, level playing field. And Ripple has mentioned it, obviously the president has mentioned it, and now we're seeing it kind of leak through into all of these other uh, projects and assets. And so uh, I think it's very exciting news for cryptocurrency as a whole, that it is finally being adopted and it will be starting to get regulated. And that's really the only way that we're gonna be able to thrive is if there is regulation that comes through and these real world use case coins uh, do come into play. So let's go on to the next article here. Ripple, UK's HM Treasury classifies XRP as exchange token, not security. So the UK's agency report classifies XRP primarily as an exchange token along with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it goes on to say that in the document titled UK Regulatory Approach to Crypto Assets and Stablecoins, Consultation and Call for Evidence, the British Authority writes that cryptocurrencies serve a variety of functions from trading digital collectibles to raising capital for new projects. At the same time, the report also states that there is no internationally agreed taxonomy or classification. So it says, however, XRP does not fall under this category according to HM Treasury. Rather, XRP belongs to the category of unregulated tokens, which can be further divided into utility tokens and exchange tokens. In this regard, the UK authority writes in this report, exchange tokens that are primarily used as a means of exchange this includes widely known crypto assets such as Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. So that's huge. Um, I just feel that as soon as we get this clarity from the SEC, that Ripple is poised to drastically increase in price. So let's get into the next article here. Ripple's CTO presents stablecoin issuance feature on XRP Ledger. The issued currency's function of the XRP Ledger allows financial institutions to create and operate stablecoins. XRP can be used as a bridge between stablecoin issuers and payment networks. So Ripple CTO is David Schwartz. And as we mentioned in a previous video, uh, he had a patent for what could be described as XRP all the way back in 1987. It describes a distributed ledger protocol. And it says that Ripple CTO David Schwartz has made a publication going in depth on the features and benefits of the XRP ledger. And since it's going to be helping companies essentially, create and bridge between stablecoin issuers and payment networks. It's essentially solving uh, the similar problem that XRP's quote unquote sister company, Stellar Lumens is doing. And so I see nothing but great things ahead for XRP and for Stellar. And just the fact that David Schwartz is implementing stablecoin issuance on XRP. And then as we'll soon see how that actually all ties into the Flare network and with the Spark token, uh, being able to utilize smart contracts it's going to be very, very exciting. And, you know, that could end up posing some sort of threat to Ethereum itself because Ethereum also works on smart contracts, too. So uh, it says that job postings indicate that Ripple is working with central banks for CBDCs. So central bank digital currencies. Uh, it says that job postings indicate that Ripple is already working with several banks 
around the world to test digital central bank currencies on the XRP ledger. And the central bank technical partner managers are expected to lead and oversee the implementation of CBDC projects. So it says for quite some time now, Ripple has made no secret of the fact that it wants to position on-demand liquidity and XRP as a bridge currency in a world of digital central bank currencies. In various blog posts and publications, the company has reported on the benefits of the XRP ledger in recent weeks and months. And most recently, the CTO, David Schwartz, explained how financial institutions can use the XRP ledger's issued currencies feature to create and operate stable coins. So uh, this basically goes on to talk about what we were just saying, essentially XRP working and utilizing stable coins on the XRP ledger. And so it says which central banks could be on board. And so it says while this is merely speculation, According to Twitter user Talinos, Turkey and the Netherlands and Brazil could be possible candidates to issue a stable coin on the XRP ledger. So what does that mean? It means that Ripple, once all this stuff gets settled, are already working with central banks. They already have over 300 partners. They're a company that's valued at $10 billion. They just raised their Series C round, $250 million. And that's the last round before a company goes public. And who else do we know is also looking for an IPO? Coinbase. So this is all coming, guys. This is right here. This is right in front of your face. And I think that SEC jolt was just a little shake of the tree to get out the investors who are just in it for a quick buck. Ripple, XLM, and a host of others, or only a host of a few others, uh, real have real world utility and i can guarantee you that out of these other seven eight thousand cryptocurrencies there's only going to be a handful of them that survive and ripple xlm will for sure be two of them another article here for ripple ripple partner sbi remit rolls out international money transfer service to thirteen thousand four hundred atms so Ripple partner SBI Remit has partnered with Japan's Lawson Bank to roll out the Remit card to more than 13,400 ATMs. SBI Holdings, they're one of Ripple's key partners in Asia. And it goes on to say that the Remit Corporation uh, and Lawson Bank announced today that the ATMs at Japan's Lawson Bank will accept SBI Remit's international money transfer service beginning January 12th. So that's today. So today they're rolling out uh, SBI Remit is the largest money transfer provider in Japan with over 10 billion Japanese yen monthly, with 90% of its customers being foreigners living in Japan. So through the partnership with Lawson Bank, its customers can use the Remit card to make international money transfers 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and at more than 13,400 locations, according to the official press release. And so it says the ATMs are located in the convenience stores throughout Japan and offer an international money transfer service that allows customers to send money to more than 220 countries and regions around the world in as little as 10 minutes. So what are we saying here? Is the SEC lawsuit slowing Ripple down? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Ripple does not operate in just the U.S. So no matter what the outcome is of this whole SEC debacle, uh, there's Ripple's not going anywhere and neither is their coin XRP. And in other Ripple news, Ripple Labs welcomes on board a former Amazon executive. So the San Francisco based company Ripple has obtained the services of Devraj Baradan, formerly of Amazon. Uh, Baradan joins Ripple as the new senior vice president of the engineering department. Among many other responsibilities, he has been tasked to lead the firm's engineering team. And it said that although Ripple has recently caught the news headlines for the wrong reasons, it has still managed to attract several high-profile executives. Braden is the latest name among Top Guns that have joined Ripple. And nearly a month ago, the former chief regulatory affairs officer, J.P. Morgan Chase, Sandy O'Connor, was added to its board of directors. So... As mentioned before, Ripple's not slowing down. They're going full force ahead. And I found this video. You guys can check it out. I'll link it in the description. But it says a lawyer discusses the likely result of the SEC versus Ripple and its effect on XRP and other XRP coin issues. And so attorney Jeremy Hogan, uh, he basically goes through all of this stuff. And he kind of gives his outlook on what he thinks is going to happen and what some potential outcomes of the SEC lawsuit could be. And I advise you guys all to watch it. It's only about 15 minutes long, but he really kind of goes in depth into what some of the possible outcomes could be. And 
to me, it seems like the out of the possible outcomes that could take place, none of them really seem too damaging where they would actually bring down Ripple or the currency as a whole. So I advise you guys to go check that out. And with that being said, that will do it for this edition of the Encrypted Capital Recap. If you guys like what you heard, please drop us a comment or a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And we will catch you all in the next video.